What's up everyone, it's Victon here with a Path of Exile currency making guide. With me having started streaming recently, during my streams a ton of people have been asking me how I make currency, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a guide on a few of my different strategies. In this guide specifically, we're going to be going over the Tropical Island Splinter Farming Strategy. This is my favorite method of currency making at the moment, as it only takes a moderate amount of currency investment into the map to really start seeing some great returns. And of course, you can do this method playing solo. Also, lots of different builds can complete these maps, ranging from budget builds all the way up to the most expensive spark or stackers. Point being, everyone can do these maps as long as you have a decent, fast clearing build which you can accomplish with, like I said, even some budget builds. Basically, when I run these maps, I average about 1x in returns each map and can run about 5 maps an hour pretty comfortably without much effort. That comes out to about 5x in profit without considering the fact that I typically find about one 6 passive eye level 84 cluster jewel with the aura effect on it a day, which sells for about 39 exalts in the current market. A solid part of the profit also comes from Legion Delirium Splinters, given that once you hit 300 splinters you can turn them into a simulacrum, which easily sells for 2.2 exalts each. In this guide I'm going to be going over a few different options on how to set these maps up, as well as mention some of the best builds out there for this, and a bit of info about them. Before we get into that though, as always, if you end up enjoying this guide or any of my many other Path of Exile guides and build guides, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more content just like this. Also, if you want to support the channel, I'll have a link to my Patreon in the video description, as well as a link to my Twitch channel. Being a sub on Patreon or Twitch gets you instant access to my sub-only Discord channel, where you have an awesome community of people ready and happy to help you guys out with build questions or just come in and hang out and chat with us. I also do tons of personal build reviews and help out in there as well. Anyways, enough of that, let's jump right into the guide. Alright, so let's go over the basic strategy here. Basically, we're going to be juicing up tier 16 tropical island maps with a decent amount of map quantity, 4 sextants, 4 scarabs, 4 unique watchstones, a prophecy specific to tropical islands, 1 of 3 master missions, and then we're going to be throwing on the Xana Delirium map mod. Doing all of that is going to juice up the map so it has tons of monsters in it. The more monsters we have in the map, the higher number of splinters that we're going to get at the end of the map. Many budget builds I've tried with this average of about 80 to 90 splinters per map. If you have a build specifically designed for fast map clearing, then you can expect an average of about 120 or so splinters per map. And then once you have one of those mega farmer builds like the Spark or a Stacker I mentioned for example, you can average about 180 plus splinters every single map. What's nice about this strat is that you can start with a budget build and your returns are only going to scale up from there. The more you put into the map, the higher returns that you're going to get. But even at the lower end where you have that budget build, you're still going to be making a great amount of currency, so you can save up for one of those bigger, crazier builds. Alright, so that was the basics, but how do we actually set this up? Step 1 is we're actually going to be completing your 4-way map to unlock your 5th slot in your map device. In order to do this, you're going to need to get up to 100 Timeless Splinters on 4 of the 5 colors to create 4 different emblems. I'd suggest going with gray, orange, red, and either yellow or green. Note that the yellow and green splinters go for about one chaos per splinter, so they're going to be a little bit more expensive, which is why you're only going to want one or the other. The other colors are much cheaper. Once you have four emblems, throw those into your map device and run that map. You're going to fight a ton of monsters in waves, and at the end of that map you're going to get a ton of different rewards with the chance of dropping some highly sought after items, which could net you some nice currency back. You're also going to be unlocking your 5th slot on your map device, and you're going to be ready to go to start juicing up your maps. For our next step, let's focus on which scarabs you want to be using. Now that we have 5 slots in your map device, you can start using 4 scarabs alongside your map. So we need to find the best 4 scarabs here to juice up your map properly. This will depend on your build and your currency situation. I've come up with a simple spreadsheet here that lays out the best scarabs to use based off of price and if your build can handle legion or not. So to start off we're going to have breach scarabs. These are fantastic and actually slow down the delirium fog. The more breaches you have in your map, the better because it's going to give you more time to finish the map. And of course it just adds a ton of extra monsters to the map. Gilded scarabs are going for 10 chaos whereas polished are going for 5 chaos. From there, we're going to be getting the Harbinger Scarab because of how many monsters they add to the map. This doesn't slow down the Delirium Fog, but gives you so many monsters it's well worth the investment. 
Gilded are 10 chaos and Polished are actually only 2 chaos, so a big savings here if you do need that. Next we have Legion. Now some builds do Legion much better than others, and we're going to go over which builds are my recommended builds in a later section, but just know for now that, like Breaches, Legions will also slow down the Delirium Fog. So getting these on your map is pretty good, but honestly only worth it in my opinion if you can clear them very well. For example, a fully min-maxed Carrion Golem build is absolutely terrible at Legions, whereas a budget Bleed Split Arrow build just shreds them with its chain. So you can either choose to run Legion or not, it just depends on your build. Gilded Scarabs run for 11 Chaos here, and Polished go for only 5 Chaos. After that we actually have some cheaper Scarabs and can start picking up Gilded versions even for the budget options. We want Metamorph for the additional monsters it gives, and also the chance at some nice loot at the end with the Metamorph boss. These are only 3 Chaos a pop, so well worth it. We also can pick up Ambush here, at only 4 Chaos each for Gilded. I typically will take a stack of alchemy orbs into the map with me to use them on normal strong boxes. This gives some nice additional, basically free monsters. You could also go with Elder Gilded Scarabs here for only 2 chaos. These are our cheapest scarabs and offer a decent amount of monsters in the map for the price, so a great option as well. Let's go back to my spreadsheet here so we can see what the final cost would be for each option. So the cheapest two options would be as follows. First, with Legion, the total comes out to 14 Chaos. With this, you're going to be wanting to run Polished Breach, Harbinger, Legion, and Gilded Elder. If your build can't do Legion, then we're going to go with Polished Breach, Harbinger, and Gilded Ambush, as well as Gilded Elder, for a total of 13 Chaos. Now, for the more expensive setup, which will get you even better returns, we're going to go with Gilded Breach, Harbinger, Legion, and Metamorph. That's if you have a super solid build that can actually clear all the legions, get to the end boss, and also kill that metamorph boss before the delirium fog goes away. This setup costs 34 chaos and will net you the absolute most amount of splinters per map. If your build can't do legion, then swap over to Gilded Breach, Harbinger, Metamorph, and Ambush, or Elder, for a total of about 27 chaos. Alright, so that's it for Scarab, so let's hop on over and talk about what Prophecy you should be running. So a lot of people skip this or just don't know about it, but it's actually pretty crazy. Using the Prophecy, the Feral Lord 1 gives you so many more extra monsters on Tropical Islands. It's a 100% proc rate for Tropical Islands and it's specific to that map only. I highly suggest using this Prophecy every time you do a Tropical Islands map. You can snipe some of these for about 1 chaos, but they typically go for about 3 chaos. Even at 5 chaos, I would actually say these are still worth it, just because they are that good and they add so many monsters to your map. Alright, so next we're going to be going over how to roll your maps. This is very important, can play a huge role in how many splinters you're getting in your maps. Basically, my strat has been to roll the map until I get at least 85% and ideally 90% plus quantity. I of course don't run certain mods like Ellie or Physical Reflect if my build can't do those. I also choose not to run Temp Chains, because I need to go fast to outrun the Delirium Fog. From there on all of my maps with quantity from 85% to 100%, I will also Vol Orb them. Using a Vol Orb here gives you the chance at mega buffing your map up to even 140% quantity. Those are the maps that are going to give you the insane splinters. The best map I've ever run gave me 217 splinters. It was seriously a crazy map, it only happened because the map was vol orbed and had 139% quantity. Just note that if your map turns unidentified, it has the possibility of rolling hidden, physical, or elemental reflect. Not much you can do here except run it and just kind of see if you explode or not. Typically this rolling process is actually pretty quick and only cost a few chaos. Moving on to sextants. So for Sextants, we can actually use either Awaken or Prime Sextants, depending on your budget. Either are actually very cheap, so you'll typically end up about spending 3 Chaos rolling Awaken Sextants, and you get them for 3 maps, so it only comes out to 1 Chaos or so average per map, so not too bad at all. For Sextants, you're going to be wanting to look out for a few select rare ones. Finding one with the Nemesis Monsters Drop Currency is a fantastic mod that you're actually going to want to save this for later. I'm going to have an entire video on how best to utilize this sextant for making profit off of it. So again, in the meantime, just save that one and use it later. 
You can also look for maps containing monsters from beyond. This is another great sextant that I would personally suggest saving and using on bigger maps like 100% Delirious maps or alongside that Nemesis Currency sextant. Honestly though, you're mainly going to be looking out for ones that have mods that give extra monster packs. For example, 8 additional packs of monsters that deal lightning damage. This just gives the map some more monsters to spawn and thus more splinters to drop. Regardless of if you use Awakened or Prime Sextants, I cannot stress this enough, you should always be using Sextants on your Watchstones no matter what they are, they're almost free and give your maps a ton of extra monsters and currency returns. Next, let's go over the Master Missions. You're always going to be wanting to apply a Master Mission to the map. The absolute best is Alva. This gives your map a ton of monsters and splinters in return. Just note that some people like to save their Alvas so they can run them in the 100% Delirious juice map maps. I personally do save my Alvas for those really big 100% Delirious maps instead of this tropical island splinter farming strategy. Instead, I will either use Einhar or June. Now, both Alva and June actually do slow down the Delirium fog, so really good for getting those extra splinters. I personally don't like running June though as much because it takes me too much time to figure out what to do with the dude since I have my board set up for max profit and I don't want to make a mistake. It's up to you though, I definitely say that June is the second best for splinters, but again I just don't run it personally because I don't want to mess up my board by selecting something wrong because I have to act quickly and I lose the delirium fog. Instead I typically run Einhar. These aren't too crazy, but do add a decent amount of free monsters to the map, so why not? The only two you actually wouldn't want to use here are Xana or Nico, because they don't give the map any extra monsters. Next, let's quickly go over the Xana mod we're going to select. This is of course Delirium. Basically the entire strat here revolves around this. We're going to pay 16 Chaos and get Delirium onto the map. It might seem like a steep price to pay, but once you have all of these extra bits and bobs affecting the map, you're going to end up getting so many splinters, currency and delirium orbs, just to name a few things, that it's going to give you tons of currency returns and make it completely worth it. Now we're also going to make sure that again we run the map Tropical Island, because the way that the delirium fog works here is it goes away after a short time spent in the map and defeating monsters. In the Tropical Island map, because of the way it's laid out, it actually gives you more time to finish the map with the Delirium Fog not closing in on you as fast. It's also important to note here that you'll earn more splinters for the monsters you defeat later on in the map, closer to the ending boss. So if your breach is at the very end of the map, you're going to get more splinters for those monsters compared to if that same breach was at the very beginning of the map. That's why it can be annoying sometimes when you get all of your breaches right up front and it really hurts your splinter gains for that map, compared to getting them all right at the end. It's an interesting interaction and I figured I'd mention it so you can understand why sometimes you feel like you should be getting more splinters than you do, and other times you end up with a ton of splinters seemingly out of nowhere. Moving on here to what watchstones you can use. Alongside your normal colored watchstones, there's also unique ivory watchstones that drop from the Cyrus boss fight. These watchstones have different modifiers on them, like for example, Irresistible Temptation, which gives the map an additional random prefix, which essentially means more map quantity, or Booming Populous, which gives the map additional monster pack size, or even watchstones like the Terror, which gives the map plus one to area level. Having four unique watchstones on your map instead of the regular four watchstones actually provides a huge boost to your returns. As you can see here, I have a spreadsheet of current prices for watchstones I most commonly use. Some of these can be very expensive as you see, but the good thing about these stones is they can be used many times. When you're searching to purchase one of these, make sure you go with the one with the highest possible uses remaining on it. Don't get scammed and pay the same price for one with only one use remaining that you would for getting one with 12 uses remaining for example. Now, as you can tell, some of these are quite expensive, so I wanted to mention why you would run certain watchstones versus only using the regular ones. Now, for somebody wanting to stay in a budget, I would suggest using the Territories Unknown and Irresistible Temptation. As you can see, they come out to under 1 chaos per map, so really great value. Booming Populous is also great because it gives map pack size to the whole map, and for 8 chaos a map, that is pretty solid. And from there, the reason you might want to use, for example, the Terror, would be to get that plus one to map area level. Using that on Tropical Island is going to make Tropical Island a level 17 map, which means item levels will drop at 84. 
So when we have Delirium, you're going to be getting eye level 84 Cluster Jewels. That gives you the opportunity to drop the super expensive and sought after eye level 84 Medium Cluster Jewels with 6 passives and Aura Effect. These sell for a whopping 39 exalts in the current market. Like I mentioned earlier, I typically get at least one of these every single day using this fully juiced Tropical Island method, so you end up with massive profits doing this. Of course, don't worry, even if you choose to go in without that plus one map area watchstone, you will still be making great profit, but I still wanted to mention that because it is a great way of making even more profit. And that's really it for how to set up the map itself, but I did want to finish out by going over some of the top builds right now for doing this method, ranging from a budget gear all the way up to those big boy aura stackers. And this list is based off of my personal experience, and I'm sure there's tons of other capable builds out there, so feel free to experiment and see what build works best for you. For budget builds, I would say my two favorite options right now are Bleed, Split Arrow, Gladiator, or Champion. I ran this build and it cost about 40x total, and I was getting an average of about 100 splinters per map, and it was very comfortable and easy to clear, so really great profit for the investment. Also, you could even try a tanky Essence Strain Contagion build, which are typically under 20 exalts or so, or even self-found. And lastly for the budget section, I would say a Hidden Blade build focusing on self-poison would be a top choice as well. The build is a bit more complicated since you have a certain sextant on every map you roll, but luckily it's a common sextant, so pretty cheap to pull off. The build itself cost me around 30 exalts to set up, and I was getting about 100 to 120 splinters sometimes. And plus, it was just super fun to run with how crazy fast you can run around going through the map. From those budget builds, you can step it up to, say, a Fire Conversion Blade Vortex build, or even Self Curse with Headhunter. Those range from 50 to 200 exalts to build, and you can get about 125 splinters on average per run, and are super fun and quick to clear those maps. From there, I'd say the next tier would be a Melee or a stacker, which costs about 400 to 700 exalts to build, and will net you about 140 or so splinters every run, and again, be very quick to run. And on top of that, you're literally never going to die in these maps, so you could easily level to 100 doing this method if you wanted. Lastly, of course, would be the crazy aura stackers that do spark or EK. I personally am running a spark aura stacker, and I'm getting on average about 190 splinters per map and about 10 exalts an hour without even trying that hard, and that's without factoring in the 39 exalt cluster jewels I sell each day as well. Overall though, whatever your build or budget is, this method will absolutely work for you and will net you some fantastic currency returns. I personally find the map itself to be super fun to play. You get some crazy maps sometimes, and there can be thousands of monsters in each map, which can get pretty crazy and pretty fun. That actually reminds me to mention that a nice little side bonus here you can do to make some currency is, since these maps have so many monsters, make sure you're using incubators on all of your gear, including your trinket. Since there's so many monsters, you're going to be getting those rewards so much faster than normal. Also try and get a high trinket with chance for monsters to duplicate rogue markers. This goes a long way and makes you some extra currency if you sell those markers. Anyways, that's really all I got on this one, guys. I hope I was able to present this to you guys in an easy understand way, and y'all have come out with some knowledges that maybe you didn't have before, and can start making some extra juicy currency. As always, if you enjoyed this guide, or any of my other Path of Exile guides or build guides, like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Also, if you want to support the channel, I'll have a link to my Patreon in the video description below, as well as a link to my Twitch channel. Being a sub on Patreon or Twitch gets you instant access to my sub only Discord channel, where we have an awesome community of people always ready and willing to help you out with any build questions you have, or just come in and hang out and chat with us. I also do tons of personal build reviews through Discord, and help out just in general where I can. But yeah, that's all I got for this one guys, I will catch y'all in the next one.